Shall I start? So good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, uh, depending on uh, where you are. March 24 is the United Nations International Day for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violation and for the dignity of uh, victims. While many words went from Greek to Latin and to modern European languages, keeping the same roots, this is not the case for truth. We have three different words, aletheia in Greek, veritas in Latin, and truth in English. German philosopher Martin Heidegger wrote lengthy discussions of these differences. In fact, the three wars both are and are not the same. All have deep meanings connected with religion. Veritas in Latin comes from the Indo-European root ver, which means faith, both in the sense of religious faith and of faithfulness. All the Roman husbands and wives wrote a ring called Vera to symbolize their faithfulness to each other, and many of us still do. Truth has another unrelated root and comes from an even older Indo-European layer where true had two different meanings, religion and tree. True, in the sense of religion, remains in the name of Nordic religious groups, such as, as a true, the religion of the gods called As. The Proto-Indo-European true is also the root of our word, tree. What do religion, trees, and truth have in common? All are firmly rooted in the ground as opposite to fantasies and unfounded beliefs that, so to speak, fly in the air. Still different is the Greek word aletheia, which means unveiling or taking away the lete. Lete is the veil that hides the reality and prevents us from seeing it, and comes straight from the veil of Maya that, according to Hinduism, 
covers all the world in illusion. But Lete is also a river, personified as a goddess who offers to drink a water causing oblivion and loss of memory. Unveiling or overcoming Lete is a letseya, true, meaning recovering the lost memory or piercing the veil of illusion and seeing things as they really are. Finally, there was also a different relation between truth and water. For the Romans, Veritas, truth, was a goddess who hid at the invisible bottoms of the wells from which she emerged naked at night. Romans used to drink water from the wells before sleeping in the hope of encountering the naked truth, an expression we still use in their dreams. In the Christian tradition, the words what is truth are forever connected with Pontius Pilate, the Roman prefect or governor of Judea, who had the authority to decide whether Jesus should be liberated or executed. When Jesus told Pilate that his mission was to testify to the truth, the Roman governor famously answered, what is truth? Although personally persuaded that Jesus was innocent, in the end, Pilate decided it was politically expedient to humor the Jewish high priests that wanted the founder of Christian religion executed as heretic. For this, Pilate is often portrayed as a relativist who did not believe nor care about the truth and the coward. However, there are traditions claiming that after Jesus' death, he realized he had made a mistake and converted to Christianity. The story inspired the works of fiction, such as The Gospel According to Pilate, published in 2000 by French novelist Eric Emmanuel Schmidt, and the decision of some Christian churches, but not the Roman Catholic one, to canonize Pilate as a saint. In his most anti-Christian book, The Antichrist, German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, on the contrary, canonized Pilate in his own way as the champion of a philosophical relativism that opposed the Christian idea that an objective truth exists. This question is still with us. And it has a lot to do with religious liberty. We can consider Jesus a victim of religious persecution, as the Jewish establishment was not prepared to tolerate the competition of a new religion. If there is an absolute and universal truth, then persecuting somebody for holding unpopular religious views and executing an innocent man are crimes. Then Pilate has no alternative and should let Jesus go free. But if there is no truth, Pilate can deny to Jesus the right to religious freedom and even the right to life for political reasons and get away with it. This is, of course, the same story repeating itself with Taiji men. If there is a right to truth, and if simply truth does exist, then persecuting Taiji men for political reasons should be acknowledged as a crime. Ill-founded tax bills should be recognized as fabricated and false, and justice should be restored. The only way corrupt bureaucrats can continue to persecute Taiji men and hope in impunity is to claim or imply that there is no truth, or truth is just ever-changing and subjective. This is, as old Greek philosophers had already explained, an impossible 
and self-defeating position. Because if there is no truth, even the sentence there is no truth cannot be true. On the contrary, as Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We are here to know the truth about the Taiji Man case and by setting uh, Taiji Man free, that truth will make at the same time our spirits free as well. That concludes my uh, introduction and allows me to present uh, the first speaker, Carolina Maria Kotkowska, researcher in esotericism and new religious movements at the Center for Comparative Studies of uh, Civilization in uh, Jagiellonian University in Poland. We saw each other just a few days ago at the conference in England, and Willie too, and so it's my pleasure uh, to give the floor to Carolina. Thank you very much, Massimo. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who's listening. I'm going to present a paper today of which uh, the extended version you will be able to soon read at uh, Bitter Winter magazine. So let's start. Children have the right to be themselves. They have the right to make mistakes. They have the right to have their own, op own opinions. They have the right to respect. There are no children. These are, there are people. This is what, at the beginning of the 20th century, over a hundred years ago, the doctor, educator and social activist Henry Goldschmidt, known more widely under his pen name Janusz Korczak, wrote. His knowledge, ideas and extraordinary story save, serve as inspiration to act against the odds for the goods of others, but also as a testament of true heroism and the literal dedication of his life, remaining in harmony with his own morality. On December 21, 2010, the United Nations General Assembly declared March 24 as the International Day uh, for, the human, uh, for, uh, for the Right to the Truth Concerning Gross Human Rights Violation and for the Dignity of Victims. Unfortunately, Janusz Korczak's history associated with the Nazi extermination of Jews during the Second World War falls within the realm of gross human rights violations and definitely should be remembered and studied. Somewhat, uh, somewhat tangentially, uh, but importantly related to the theme of our web uh, webinar, is Korczak's engagement more than in what we would now call alternative spirituality, advocating for the equality of uh, all people and universal, universal brotherhood. The works and example of Janusz Korczak, as well as the teachings and activities of Taiji Man, teach us that self-awareness and acting in accordance with conscience are the foundations of the, uh, any actions for the good, good of the others. In this paper, I will present the ideas of Korczak about education. I believe they, as uh, his heroic life, uh, resonate with the path of Taiji Man and their Shifu, Grandmaster Dr. Hong Tao Tse, and may further inspire Dizzy, uh, his Dizzy to pursue uh, their struggle for a conscious-based education, righteousness, and, and justice. Janusz Korczak was called the old doctor. Under this pseudonym, he's all, he also hosted a radio program for children. Born in Warsaw, Poland, Korczak dedicated his life to advocating for children, children's rights and welfare. Um, his pioneered uh, innovative educational methods concer uh, centered on respect for children's autonomy and dignity. Driven by his profound concern for children, Korczak founded an orphanage in Warsaw called Dom Sierot, uh, the House of Orphans, where he implemented his progressive childcare and educational philosophies. He stressed the importance of allowing children to freely express themselves and participate in decisions concerning their lives. Aside from his work and as an educator, Korczak was also a prolific writer, penning numerous books, articles and essays on pedagogy, children's rights and social issues. His most famous works include How to Love a Child and King Matt the First, uh, which continue to inspire educators and child advocates worldwide. Tragically, uh, despite facing the grave uh, dangers of Nazi occupation of Poland, Korczak amundantly refused offers to escape and opted to remain with the children in his care. In 1942, he and the children from, from his orphanage were deported to the Treblinka extermination camp 
where they met their tragic end. Janusz Korczak's legacy endures as a symbol of unwavering dedication to the welfare of children and the defense of their rights, transcending borders and generations. His life and work continue to inspire countless individuals in the fields of education, child psychology and human rights activism. It is here that we can call a parallel with the work of Dr. Hong and Tai Jimin. Korczak's writings on education, upbringing and generally shaping the relationship between adults and children represent an approach that su su surprises its time. They are by no means simple guides where one can find universal recipes suitable for everyone. On the contrary, Korczak criticizes all such sources as completely detached from individual uniqueness. The relationship with the child, like with every human being, cannot be captured in a simple schemes and requires involvement, Korczak wrote. The book with its ready-made formulas dulls the sight and dulls the thought. Living through someone else's experience, investigating, investigation, view, to such an extent means that confidence in oneself is lost and uh, that one does not to look for herself or himself. I want it to be understood that no book, no doctor can replace one's own vigilant thought, one's own careful observation. So what about textbooks that systematize various stages? They too should be approached with some reservation, not as absolutes. There are no simple recipes that can be applied unreflectively. The foundation for telling others what to do uh, is the understanding and upbringing of oneself. How can one dictate rules that we have not internalized themselves? Unfortunately, the process of growing up and upbringing often looks quite different, something that author acknowledge. It is fortunate, he wrote, for humanity that we cannot compel children to succumb to the educational and didactic assaults of their healthy reasoning and healthy human will. For those seeking guidance, uh, this reading is very demanding and engaging because the author constantly poses questions that may be difficult for a parent or teacher, but which must be answered individually in relation to others. However, the basis of this relationship is always respect. Kojak's approach, although positively assessing firmness, was radically anti-authoritarian. Not only is the uh, authoritarian approach to the child harmful, but it's also ineffective. He wrote, Everything achieved through coercion, pressure, violence is impermanent, uncertain and unreliable. The role of a caregiver was understood as accompanying the child on the path to adulthood with full respect and understanding. So what is the role of an educator and caregiver? The child wants to be good. If they can't, teach them. If they don't know, explain it to them. If they can't, help them. Therefore, excessive use of prohibitions and comments does not reflect on the child, but on the caregiver. There should be also respect for the fact that the child thinks differently. In his opinion, children are not stupider than adults, they just have less experience. A child cannot think like an adult, but it can think childishly about serious adult matters. Lack of knowledge and experience forces it to think differently. In addition to his widely known pedagogical writings, children's novels and also a radio broadcast, Korczak also participated in activities that were not understood by many. He was a member of the mixed Freemasonry organization, the Droit Humain, meaning human rights, uh, during his period, which was closely associated with the theosophical doctrines in a specific context. Mixed here meaning it admitted both men and, uh, men and women, while most other Masonic organizations admitted only men. Uh, the section in which Korczak was active was based on a seven-step initiation path rooted in theosophical concepts. Korczak was not only an uh, active member of the Lodge, but also participated in theosophical summer camps, which brought together individuals associated with the Polish Theosophical Society, Ledwa Imain, and the Liberal Catholic Church. Members of this organization would come with their families, and during the day, Korczak would also care for the children on these outings. The theosophical ideas uh, focused on the universal brotherhood and equality were being implemented in Poland at the time, primarily in Warsaw, through activities such as running clubs for at-risk children or the rehabilitation uh, of prisoners. Theosophists uh, served as volunteers in four out of the five uh, Warsaw prisons. Theosophy also had specific approach to pedagogy. It assumed reincarnation, so there was no possibility of treating a child uh, as a blank slate that is only filled with some influences from the outside. Theosophists believed that the soul of the child could be older than their, their own, 
at a different level of evolution, and education was seen as companionship rather than one-sided influence. This way of thinking influenced Korczak's approach to pedagogy, or at least was in harmony with it. He wrote, The child is a parchment tightly inscribed with tiny hieroglyphs, of which only a part you can decipher, and some of you can erase or just highlight, and you will fill them with your own content. The history and ideas of Korczak, the testimony of his life, which he ended by accompanying the children he cared for at the moment of their death, is something that should be remembered not only on a day like today, the International uh, Day for the Right to the Truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of victims. It also teaches us that deep morality can go in hand with uh, alternative spirituality beyond religions and divisions. It teaches us that acting for the good of others can only be achieved by making efforts to work on our own knowledge and development. These elements of teachings are shared by both this extraordinary doctor and educator and the Shifu of Taiji man, Dr. Hong Tao Tse. It's also remarkable that both were persecuted and both, and both despite facing uh, unequal treatment confronting all odds, did not wish ill upon their opponents uh, and oppressors. Taiji man, which has been dealing with attacks and human rights violations for over two decades, continues its mission, mission for world peace without attacking individuals, but only pointing out the injustices they encounter. Similarly, Korczak, who wrote, I wish no one ill. I do not know how. I do not know how it's done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carolina. And uh, as she said in the beginning, uh, to understand the figure of Korczak, you will uh, find uh, more uh, complete text of uh, her speech uh, published soon in uh, Bitter Winter. Uh, before giving the floor to Sara Pozzos, uh, we will now watch uh, a video on the uh, injustice uh, site of Taiji Men uh, 1219 uh, incident uh, unveiled uh, as a witness to human value. So I will ask uh, the video to be played. The Taiji Men case, which is known as Taiwan's tax law February 28th incidents, marked its 27th anniversary today, December 19th, 2023. Despite the final acquittal by the Supreme Court of Taiwan, this case remains unresolved. In a gesture aiming at highlighting and advocating for the significance of human rights, the Taiji Men Qigong Academy and the Action Alliance to address December 19th held a monument unveiling ceremony for the injustice side of Taiji Men December 19th incidents at the Swiss Mountain Villa. Nearly 20 experts from various fields jointly unveiled the monument, planting Taiwanese Cypress and Araucaria Heterophylla, signifying rebirth and hope. <laughs> It's not just for Taiji Men Qigong Academy only. It's also to manifest its commitment to justice for the entire society. It is worth cherishing ensuring that the mistakes of the past do not perpetuate in the posterity of our descendants. The monument bears inscriptions recounting Taiwan's history of persecution in taxation and human rights, like the displayed chronicles within the dilapidated building that reflect bygone years. The place was originally intended for the cultivation of both body and mind, as well as the transmission of cultural heritage among Taijuan Dizi. However, due to the Taijuan case, this site was forcefully sealed. Despite its return in 2020, it has turned into an unusable ruin. Professor Zhi Longchen said that this case is a fabricated case and should be rectified. The Tai Jimin case was also intricately entangled. It was disclosed by Xi Yersheng, the tax officer, 
that prosecutor Ho Kwan Rin was the one entangling Tai Ji Min, pulling it into the affair. Therefore, this is a case demanding rectification. In the scrutiny of a fabricated case, the issue of winning or losing is irrelevant. The sole resolution for a fabricated case lies in exoneration, in restoring the truth. Many unjust occurrences happen under the guise of justice. While we believe we are living in an era marked by democracy, the rule of law and human rights, there are still profoundly infuriating or disheartening occurrences hidden in certain obscure corners. The Tai Chi Man case was categorized by the control yuan as a significant human rights violation. In 2007, the Supreme Court rendered a verdict of innocence and non-tax liability after three trials. In 2009, the victims received compensation for being wrongfully detained. This stirs attention from scholars and experts both domestically and internationally, prompting calls for the redress of such cases. In Taiwan, the question rises, can it liberate itself from lingering vestiges of authoritarian era and transform into a nation of freedom and human rights. This goal needs collaborative efforts between the people and the governments, realizing the rights bestowed upon us by the Constitution. So, we will now introduce the second speaker of the first session, that's Sara Susana Apostos Bravo, who is a professor at uh, Universidad Saman of Jalisco in Guadalajara, Mexico. Buenos días eh, y buenas tardes a, a ustedes. Buenas noches hasta hasta Taiwán. Um, hablaré en español. Um, Máximo, como siempre, me hará el favor de hacer la traducción. Uh, good. Am I muted? Oh. No, I'm not. Good morning, uh, good evening uh, to uh, everybody. And uh, I apologize for uh, speaking in Spanish and uh, Máximo will translate for me. He estudiado el caso Taiji Men y la persecución que ha sufrido. El caso, conocido mucho más en Europa y Asia, es prácticamente desconocido en América Latina. De este lado del mundo tenemos muchos más problemas que en otras latitudes, pero los casos de persecución y violación a los derechos humanos parecen ser lamentablemente universales. I have studied the Taijiman case and the persecution they have suffered. The case much better known in Europe and Asia is practically unknown in Latin America. On this side of the world, we have many more problems than in other latitudes, but the case of persecution and human rights violations seem to be unfortunately universal. La historia de la persecución y represión contra la religi las religiones que fueron catalogadas como organizaciones criminales en Taiwán data de 1996. Lo que sabemos es que la persecución contra el Taiji Men inició en ese año y lleva 28. En 2007, la Suprema Corte exoneró de todos los cargos criminales tanto por los cargos de fraude como evasión fiscal al Taiji Men, pero la reparación del daño y otras demandas por las graves violaciones a los derechos humanos no se han reconocido. The history of uh, persecution and repression of religions that were labeled as fraudulent organizations uh, in Taiwan for political reasons dates back to 1996. What we know is that the persecution against the uh, Taiji men uh, began uh, in that year and has been going on for 28 years. In 2007, Taiji men was exonerated by the Supreme Court of all uh, criminal charges, both of fraud and of tax evasion. However, it continued to be harassed and it has not received justice to this day 
for the grave human rights violation it has suffered. Por eso hoy, en el marco del Día Internacional del Derecho a la Verdad, con relación a las, graves, a las violaciones graves de los derechos humanos y la dignidad de las víctimas, volvemos a hacer un llamado a las autoridades taiwanesas porque el derecho a la verdad implica reconocer las graves violaciones a los derechos humanos y reparar el daño. That is why today, within the framework of an International Day for the Right to Truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of victims, we once again appeal to the Taiwanese authorities because the right to truth implies acknowledging the serious human rights violations against Taiji men and redressing the harm. La verdad no debe ser entendida solo como un concepto moral o filosófico, sino como el derecho inalienable de cada víctima que ha sufrido violaciones graves a sus derechos, a fin de reconocer las circunstancias que propiciaron estas violaciones y la evolución y resultados de las investigaciones. En el caso que nos ocupa, el Taiji Men, las demandas son específicas. The truth should not be understood only as a moral or philosophical concept. It is the inalienable right of every victim who has suffered gross violations of his or her rights to know and hear the truth about the circumstances that led to these violations and the evolution and results of the corresponding investigations. In the case we examine today, Taiji Men, our demands are specific. Uno, que el Estado aplique la justicia transicional mediante los mecanismos que considere necesarios para acceder a la verdad en el caso que lleva 28 años. El alcance de la justicia transicional es sumamente importante porque contempla que esos mecanismos también garanticen la reparación del daño y algo trascendental, la no repetición posterior a los conflictos. Al hacerlo, la verdad y la memoria se fusionan en el imaginario de la justicia como el ideal máximo de los derechos humanos. We demand that the state applies transitional justice through the mechanisms it deems necessary to access the truth in a case that has been going on for 28 years. The scope of transitional justice is extremely important because it implies that these mechanisms also guarantee the reparation of damages and something crucial that after the conflict, the abuses are not repeated. When this is achieved, truth and memory merge in the image of justice as the ultimate ideal of human rights. Dos, que el Estado haga un atento llamado al Ministerio de Finanzas y a la Oficina Nacional de Impuestos para homologar los criterios sobre la naturaleza de las donaciones basadas en pruebas. Second, we demand that the state instructs the Ministry of Finance and the National Taxation Bureau to standardize the criteria on the nature of uh, gifts based on evidence. Mm -hmm. Tres, que el Estado revoque la factura fiscal ilegal que trajo como consecuencia la confiscación de la tierra sagrada donada al Tayimén y por ende que estos regalos sean devueltos a quien corresponde. We demand that the state revokes the illegal tax bill that resulted in the confiscation of the sacred land of Tayimén so that the money Tayimén did see donated to buy this land may achieve its intended purpose. Cuatro, que el Estado repare los daños en los términos establecidos por el Taiji Men. Four, we demand that the state indemnifies Taiji Men for the damages they suffered according to their requests. Cinco, que se restaure la inocencia de Taiji Men Shifu y Dizi. Fifth, we demand that the innocence of Taiji Men Shifu and did see be restored. El derecho a la verdad es un paso más hacia la justicia, 
No es la justicia en sí, pero se acerca a la justicia mediante la verdad. La verdad implica conocer, saber cómo y bajo qué circunstancias se violaron los derechos de las víctimas. Es exigir al gobierno que investigue y repare el daño ocasionado por esas violaciones. Es aspirar a que nunca más se repita la persecución y represión de un grupo o una fe en particular. The right to truth is a step towards justice. It is not justice itself, but it approaches justice through truth. Truth implies knowing how and under what circumstances the rights of the victims were violated. It demands that the government investigates and repair the damage caused by those violations. It asks that never again will the government repeat the persecution and repression of a particular group or faith. Este derecho debe ser especialmente defendido cuando los regímenes represivos intentan reescribir los acontecimientos para borrar de la historia y de la memoria la violación a los derechos humanos. Por tal razón, las víctimas de abuso no pueden y quizá no deban olvidar esas violaciones y para lograrlo, la memoria colectiva cobra un sentido de trascendencia histórica al preservar en monumentos, museos, archivos, imágenes y registros públicos lo que significó la persecución y la violación de los derechos. This right must be especially defended when there are in the war repressive regimes that attempt to rewrite the past, to erase the violation of human rights from history and memory. For this reason, victims of abuse cannot, and perhaps should not, forget these violations. To do so, collective memory takes on a sense of historical transcendence by preserving in monuments, museums, archives, images, and public records what the persecution and violation of the rights mean. Los días establecidos por Naciones Unidas como el de hoy precisamente intentan preservar en la memoria histórica la búsqueda de la verdad y la dignidad humana de las víctimas. The days of observance established by the United Nations, such as today, precisely try to preserve in the historical memory the search for the truth and the human dignity of the victims. Por tal razón, Taiji Men reclama la justicia transicional porque la búsqueda de la verdad y el acercamiento a la justicia tiene que ver con las víctimas, con quienes han sufrido la persecución, la cárcel, la estigmatización y el despojo de sus propiedades. For this reason, Taiji Men calls for transitional justice, because the search for the truth and the approach to justice have to do with the victims, with those who have suffered the persecution, imprisonment, stigmatization, and dispossession of their property. Finalmente, me interesa rescatar una idea más con relación a la justicia transicional. Esta se entiende o define como la variedad de procesos y mecanismos asociados con los intentos de una sociedad por resolver los problemas derivados de un pasado de abuso a gran escala a fin de que los responsables rindan cuentas de sus actos. Me interesa rescatar esta idea de la justicia transicional como un intento para la rendición de cuentas y el caso Tayimén porque las demandas específicas de Taiji Men no aspiran a que los culpables de la persecución rindan cuentas, sino a que la restauración de la inocencia de Taiji Men Sifu y otras demandas que mencioné sean reales. Finally, I would like to highlight one more idea in relation to transitional justice. Transitional justice is understood or defined as the variety of processes and mechanisms associated with a society's attempts to resolve the problems stemming from a past of large-scale abuses and to hold those responsible accountable for their actions. I am interested in rescuing this idea of transitional justice 
as an attempt to restore accountability and the Taiji Men case, because the specific demands of Taiji Men do not primarily aspire to punish the perpetrators, but to honor the victims, proclaim the innocence of their shifu, and comply with the other request I have mentioned above. Eso me lleva a pensar en la nobleza y legitimidad de las demandas de Taiji Men al tiempo de proponer quizá la constitución de una comisión de la verdad permanente que esté integrada por entes y personajes ajenos al gobierno que puedan abonar a la exigencia y demanda de Taiji Men. That leads me to think about the nobility and legitimacy of Taiji Men's demands. We can perhaps propose the constitution of a permanent true commission in Taiwan made up of entities and personalities outside the government who can examine the requests and demands of Taiji Men. Finalmente, desde este lugar, hago un reconocimiento a la lucha sostenida por el Taiji Men en casi tres décadas. Tarde o temprano, la justicia llegará para su causa. Muchas gracias. Finally, from the place where I am, I acknowledge the struggle sustained by Taiji men for almost three decades. Sooner or later, justice will come to their cause. Thank you. So, thank you to uh, thank Sarah you, Susana. Massimo. Yeah, thank you to Sara Susana Posos Bravo. And that uh, concludes the first session of our webinar, leading to the second session, which will be chaired by Willy Fautre from Brussels uh, Human Rights Without Frontiers. Thank you, uh, Massimo. Uh, and as usual, we will have uh, the opportunity in this uh, second uh, session uh, to listen to Dizzy about uh, their experience, about their thoughts, their ideas concerning the UN day dedicated today to the truth uh, <clears throat> about uh, egregious violations of human rights. But first of all, uh, we will start with a video about Madame Yu Mai Yung a global advocate for love and peace. Uh, video, please. Waving their wings as bright as flames, the female Taiji men Dizay demonstrated the Fire Phoenix's fearlessness through a cultural dance performance dedicated to the co-founder of Taiji men and the wife of Dr. Hong Tao Ji, Jiang Men Ren, Grandmaster of Taiji men the late Madame Ume Lung who passed away three years ago. On March 3rd, Madame Yu's birthday, Taiji men held a memorial service at the Taipei International Convention Center. Due to the epidemic, the memorial service was delayed for three years. Tens of thousands of people from all over the world, including politicians, businessmen, legal professionals, representatives in Taiwan, and people from all walks of life, gathered to pay tribute to Madame Yu's outstanding contributions to society and the world. Honor someone's life. It is to give value and importance to the accomplishments this individual has made in her lifetime. And Madame Yu Mei Lung, indeed, was someone who had dedicated her life to promoting love and peace. She had traveled with her husband around the world, through five continents. It is an unparalleled testimony of love. Madame Yu Mei Lung, Ao Shimu, once said, I shall go wherever my husband goes. I have always felt affected and left with a permanent impression by these words. 
Shimu is an extremely kind person who looked out for Taiji Mendiza at all times. During his speech, Dr. Hong Tao Ji, Jiang Men Ren, Grand Master of Taiji Men, converted his love for Madam Umei Lung into the fortitude to preserve her loving and persevering spirit. He prayed for blessings onto the globe by ringing the bell of world peace and love, ensuring Madam's spirit of great love would endure forever. My wife was the love of my life and the most important partner on my journey of teaching and promoting conscience, love, and peace around the world. Life is short to seize the limited time to create good opportunities, and positive karma embodies the essence of a martial artist and a self-cultivation practitioner. This also reflects our attitude towards life. Madam Wu Mei Lung had accompanied the Jiang Men Ren, Dr. Hong Tao Ji on trips to all five continents in the world over half of a century. During the time when Jiang Men Ren retreated, not only did she take on the grand vision of Jiang Men Ren, but she also showed support with actions and comforted people who were uneasy after terrorist attacks. Overview of Mrs. Hang's life was very, very rich to show the global impact um, of promoting that message of love and peace to the world. The leaders across nations, from governors to heads of state, and the vice message, vice president message was also very inspiring. Love and peace is Madam Yu's lifelong commitment. Highly respected by people in Taiwan and around the world, she had worked for a United Nations non-governmental organization, NGO, and was considered a major force behind the promotion of love and peace in the worldwide community. Taijumin Academy is the only place where we should really get emotions together as no matter where you come from, no matter what is your religion, it's one world and that's what I learned today. That the organization was doing this kind of events around the world, there were, um, of promoting peace and love around the world, I think was something good to learn about today. Dr. Rene Wadlow, the 91-year-old president of the Association of World Citizens, AWC, a United Nations NGO, has known Dr. Hong Tao Ji and Madame Wu Mei Lung for over 20 years. He traveled all the way from France to Taiwan to present the World Peace Contribution Award to Madame Wu Mei Lung in recognition of her unwavering commitment and exceptional contribution to creating a more harmonious and peaceful world. And we must all work together uh, for peace, for harmony, uh, for justice. And I believe this uh, ceremony has rededicated us uh, to these high aims. And I certainly appreciate the ability to have come and to participate and to have seen Dr. Hong again. Taiji Men Dizzy from all over the world gathered to demonstrate the cohesion of the Mun Pai to carry on the legacy of their Smu, Madam U Mei Lung, and to preserve the Taiji family. The Dizzy practice Qigong to cultivate their minds and follow their Shifu, to spread the concept of love and peace around the world and to put it into practice through their actions. You have been doing many things, leaving behind many wonderful memories. We shall always remember these moments and continue Madame Yu Mei Lung's efforts. We shall always carry this emotion in our hearts. It is our hope that this emotion will stay with us as we proceed. Thank you. It really shows the importance of culture for every nation and for people. Uh, despite the fact that we live in a modern world, Culture is very, very important, and it's inherent in every nation. Madam U Mei Lung had been a gentle and unwavering pillar of support for the Taiji Men Jiang Men Ren, Dr. Hong Tao Ji, a warm presence in Taiji Men Dizze's hearts, and a significant advocate for world peace. Although she gave off the impression of being a regular woman, she had done remarkable achievements. She was low-key, introverted, and had carried out her responsibilities as a global citizen. Life is a series of stops on a journey. Shimu, she desired for us to lead contented and joyous lives.
She wanted us to love our families and ourselves. It is the best way to repay Shim more if we can accomplish all of these tasks. The opening classics were Madame Ume Lung's all-time favorites from her lifetime. Born of a wealthy family, she had been the pride of her father. She was not spoiled though, she was a woman of the tradition. Kind, caring, and unwavering in her resolve, she devoted her life to Tai Ji Men and the Jiang Men Ren. She is a paragon of virtue. Taipei TICC Report Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, moving uh, uh, video. And we also share the deep sorrow of Dr. Hong Tao Tse and his loved ones uh, following uh, her death. And as a source of inspiration for several generations of disease, she contributed throughout her life in, to spreading a message of peace and love all around herself and in all the countries that uh, she uh, visited. And now before going the floor to the first disease, I will say a few words of introduction about the concept uh, uh, and the practice of uh, truth, an important element in uh, today's uh, event. The right to the truth is often invoked in the context of gross violations of human rights and grave breaches of humanitarian law. The relatives of victims of summary executions, enforced disappearance, missing persons, abducted children or torture, require to know what happened to them, and rightly so. The truth is a powerful light that is needed to illuminate our consciousness and show us the way to walk on in order to repair the damage caused to victims of human rights violations and attacks to human dignity. The truth is the fuel that is needed to put in motion the train of justice. The truth is the blood and the oxygen of human life, without which the quest for justice, reparation, and accountability cannot start. The search for truth is also at the heart of our human rights activities, as our final goal in each case is that justice be done. Truth and justice for Taiji men have been needed for 28 years. The Dizzy will now share in a few minutes with us their feelings about the International Day for the right to the truth concerning gross human rights violations and for the dignity of victims, proclaimed by the United General Assembly in 2010. And I will now give the floor to the first Dizzy, Sherry Young. The floor is yours. Hello, can you hear? Okay. Yes. Uh, I feel really honored to be here on the special day. My name is Sherry. I entered Tai Chi Man 30 years ago. At that time, I was a person in charge and import and export trading company. Because I practice in Tai Chi Man, I found the way to balance my body and mind for my busy work. So I took the whole family to practice at Tai Chi Man. The most beautiful memory in my life is as a Tai Chi Man did. In 1999, follow my Sifu Dr. Hong Dao's first time at the name of the Good Will Culture Visiting Group, flew to the United States to participate in the 50th anniversary parade of the Seattle Ocean Festival. 
It is my first time to United States Ocean, and it is also my first time of non-commercial trip. The Seattle Ocean Festival Torch Parade is one of the 10, top 10 parade in the United States. Tai Chi Man was the first parade to be approved and invited. Our Sifu, Simu, lead this total have 1,200 people. By three rules plan and two 747 charter plan, follow to the Seattle. We are also create the largest goodwill delegation record in Taiwan history. This parade took place three years after Tai Chi Man was persecu persecuted by public authorities in December 19, 1996, after a series of illegal investigation by persecutors. All of our <laughs> Sifu and Sumo asset freeze and in proper detention, our Sifu and Sumo bravely work towards the world. When I saw my Sifu and the Sumo standing on the red sports car, leading all the deeds with enthusiastic smiling and waving hands to both sides audience and complete eight kilometer march, I felt the resolute and the fearless spirit of our Sifu and the Sumo for promote great love to the world. During the parade, I served as a cheer leader on the roadside. When I heard people shouting us, response us, wonderful, you are wonderful, and we love Taiwan. The moment I felt very exciting, not only proud as a Taiwanese, but also on a lot, I am a Tai Chi Mendes. Could bring such a cultural feast. The white martial arts really sparked in the United States. This trip made me unforgettable in my life. Even though the lawsuit over the Tai Chi Man human rights execution case are still ongoing. Taiwan government system humiliated and made it difficult for Tai Chi men. And the National Tax Bureau continue to issue illegal tax to Tai Chi men. In the name of Korean schools, our Sifu Dr. Hong and the Sumo Mrs. Yu Mei Rong are still leading us on a journey to promote the world with love and peace. In March 2000, when Dr. Hong Dao visited the United States at the invited of Sen Senator Himes, the chairman of the U U.S. Congress Foreign Relations Committee, me and my daughter had the opportunity to join. When I seen our brother and sister performed the martial arts, at Capitol Hill, the center of the world politics and the site of the U.S. President, president's inauguration ceremony and held the world love and the peace bear ceremony. When the Tai Chi Man dragon flew over the Capitol Square, the surgeon heart once again poured out at and the Tai Chi Man once again create a Taiwan cultural miracle with the Tai Chi Man reality cultural strength. Mayor of the Washington DC, Anthony Williams, officially declared March 22, 2000 as the Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy Day in Washington DC. And the press Tai Chi Man as an international 
ambassador for peace and goodwill, recognizing Tai Chi Men's contribution to the cultural preservation efforts for me, who has been abroad for a long time to talk about business. I never imagined that one day I would be able to follow my sifu with Tai Chi Men culture to become a national diplomatic ambassador, which was also an expected result since I became a Tai Chi Men deed. In September of the same year of 2000, <clears throat> Tai Chi Men was invited to participate in the Mainlandian Sydney Olympic Games in order to promote world love and peace. Our Sifu led this traveling again to Sydney, Australia, have a very magnificent performances in Olympic Games Square, and also held Night of Ancient Culture and the World Love and the Peace Bear Ringing Ceremony at the Sydney Opera House. It is also the glory that I have experience as a Tai Chi Man did. The Tai Chi Man tax case is known as the 228 case of legal taxation in Taiwan history. After 28 years in human rights persecution, although the third trial of the judiciary has determined that Tai Chi Man is innocent, and it does not all tax. It is still suffer from tax bill torture. I am strongly call on government's agencies to prioritize conscience, the people, and the law only through completely formal reform. And the law and taxation can Taiwan economic continue to improve as every individual in Taiwan is a contributor to the economy. Ho Kuan Ren has frozen all the property to our Sifu since the first day Tai Chi Man case happened. And the state administration of taxation has repeatedly their illegal imposing taxes resulting in Taipei Swiss Villa being disrepaired for a long time and unable to be restored. After more than 28 years, once we again enter the Swiss Mountain Villa, the once magnificent majestic building turned into a dilapidated ruin almost becoming ruins. The careless government official did not get them their service, how much damage they had caused to the property, and the even greater intangible emotion damage they had created. To this day, the Taiwan was the artist's response to our rehabilitation still not satisfactory. According to the Article 117 of the Administrative Procedure Act for correct error in public power is no is unlimited time. Justice is permanent and we hope that 2024 will get the truth open in public on our Tai Chi Man case since long time awaited. Thanks for all your kindly attention. And thank you very much, Sherry Young. You are a Tai Chi Man veteran with 31 years of membership and uh, uh, you have the experience of the positive effects uh, that the Qigong uh, practices uh, uh, can have to balance the needs uh, between the body and, and the mind, as you said. 
uh, along with uh, Ada Dizzy, you have also contributed to the diffusion abroad of the Taiwanese culture, to the expansion of the Qigong Academy, and uh, to the message of peace and love of uh, Taiji Man. All values, human values that we share because they are universal uh, values. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. And now uh, I will give the floor to our second disease, and uh, Hyatt Wu, a student, young student, very young student at an elementary school. Floor is yours. Thank you, Willie. Hello, everyone. My name is Hyatt, and I just turned 11 this year. I'd like to thank my mom for encouraging and inviting me to participate in this online forum. Although today's topic is not a light one, I'd like to share my views and thoughts on it. Since I was kindergarten, I began to learn Tajiman Qigong with my mom. As time went by, I gradually gained a deeper understanding of things around me. 3rd March was the Gratitude and Prayer Memorial Concert for our beloved Shimu, and I took part in the chorus of the Love and Peace song, which was the youngest program on average, and each of us spent a lot of intensive time and effort to overcome all the difficulties. Especially during the weekend, I had to maximize the efficiency efficiency of my homework so I could still attend the hours-long practices. Our mentor brothers and sisters were there to help us face the challenges with a positive attitude. For example, since I started a few weeks late, I wasn't as familiar with the movement, movements, so I was always in the reserve position. Nevertheless, I kept up with practice with diligence and realized that it was all about self-adjustment. Self During the first rehearsal, I was still backstage as a standby, feeling disappointed. One of the brothers told me, life brings many changes and everyone may have a turn on stage or be in the standby position. Suddenly, it dawned on me that I was just like everyone else on stage. We were all united in safeguarding a big goal. My heart lifted, and I felt less alone. As long as I ensured, I, always, I was always prepared. There was still a change for my light and warmth to be seen. And I think it's a rare and blessed thing to practice shifting my mind this in Taiji Men. After I started elementary school, noticed that every December 19th, my mom would take us to Kai Tak Avenue to join the civic events for tax reform. And she talked to me about serious topics. I also started to take part in activities to promote the righteous tax system, such as handing out flyers. In addition, mom and I collaborate on producing YouTube videos, advocating for fairness and justice in the tax system. What puzzles me is why government officials always turn a blind eye to these problems. Why are they so reluctant to react people's cries for tax fairness. I don't get it. These laws were issued by the government, yet the government itself could choose not to abide by them. And the government doesn't have to fix what it did wrong. Isn't, isn't this a serious matter? In the 1219 rally, I saw many people holding various slog slogans and some even portrayed roles from stories, expressing their dissatisfaction with the tax injustice metaphorically. As I sat on Kai Tak Avenue, listening to everyone's shouts for their rights from morning till night, 
I felt the determination and efforts of everyone involved. My mom told me that during the past authorization era, authoritarian era, many horrible things were covered up by the government in collaboration with each other, passing the blame back and forth. A considerable number of innocent people suffered greatly. As a result, all these injustices have persisted until today. Although it is said that we are in the time of democracy, many cases of pers persecution still occur, and the general public simply do not know the truth or have been seriously misled. I can't imagine how difficult it would be if I personally experienced these and faced misunderstandings from people I know and those I don't know. Even though the human rights persecution case of Tai Chi Man happened 28 years ago, the way the government handles the case and its attitude makes me feel like authority is always around us. I have noticed that these government officials in charge of taxation seem to be living in their own world. They were overwhelmingly concerned about their own interests and blind to the suffering of people. I think they need to undergo a more civilized way or to look at good examples from other countries before they have a chance to rethink the essence of the tax reform. Every year, Taiji men, experts, and scholars spend a great deal of time and effort educating the public and government officials in a peaceful and transparent manner. I know that education is not limited to a single form. And as mom always said, by trying different methods, we have a better chance of understanding the important and core concepts. My mom once bought me a book on programming logic, including a section on how to backtrack from failed outcomes to identify several possible keys, solve problems, and get the whole mechanical system back up and running. This, this concept is actually quite simple and closely related to the problems we encounter in life. It's not a case of problem-solving theory is one thing, and life is another. It is the same in school. What I admire most is when the teacher tries to restore the whole picture of what happened, rather than taking things out of context and making subjective assumptions. Because acting rashly can lead to mistakes, and often, Seeing isn't necessarily believing. Therefore, the right to know the truth is crucial. If we ignore the call of truth, fail to understand and respect what the victims have endured, we cannot make correct judgments or prevent similar occurrences. My mom also said, that most Taiwanese seem not to use focusing on the thinking or questioning. Even if they do, they are not used to or afraid to express themselves, especially in public, where they might raise discussions or opinions that differ from the majority, fearing they will be viewed differently. That's why today I'm willing to be here in this serious forum where we can call for the right concepts to the public, motivating them to pay more attention and think more. Perhaps this can lead to some changes. Finally, I hope the government can realize this. In the human rights case of Taiji men, it's shameful that they have made false statements refused to admit their mistakes, and covered up their errors. I hope they truly understand the severity, address the issue in a reasonable way, making changes that inspire trust. That's all I have. Thank you for listening.
Thank you very much, Hayat. Ooh. Well, we have a very wide range of ages uh, on our panel uh, today. <laughs> Thank you and uh, congratulations for participating in this uh, discussion at such a young age. It is uh, never too early to learn things that seem to be reserved to, to adults. And you have an exceptional mother who uh, very early in your childhood shared some important uh, values and, and truths with you about what happened to Taijimen 28 years ago and about dark pages of the history of, uh, of your country, uh, Taiwan. And she did not only speak to you, but she involved you in concrete actions to make those truths and values visible uh, in the society. On 12th May, it will be Mother's Day in Taiwan. And I think you should prepare a very nice gift to thank your mother for the wise way she is educating you. Thank you very much. And now I will give uh, the floor to our third uh, speaker, Tina Uang. The floor is yours, Tina. Hi, thank you, Willie. Hello, everyone. I'm Tina. I'm honored to participate in this discussion. The United Nations General Assembly established March 24 every year as the International Day for the Rights to the Truth concerning gross human rights violation and for the dignity of victim to educate, promote, and protect the rights of, hum of victims of human rights violation. And in memory of those who have made great contribution to the cause of human rights, including Archbishop Oscar Oliver Romero. Human rights are uh, given by God and should be possessed by everyone. No one's human dignity could be violated in any form. If the perpetrator of human rights violation comes from public power, the harm caused will be deeper and wider. The personal freedom family, career, and dignity of the victim cannot be compensated by any form of compensation. Here, I would like to uh, share my own story. I have been practicing Taijin and Qigong with my family since I was a child. It has been more than 30 years now. It's nice to have a place that I can relax and be stressed outside of the school and work. Everything was so uh, wonderful till that horrible day came. I recall that the day in 1996, when I was still in my freshman year of college, my roommate put a newspaper from the United Daily News on the table, which was one of the largest newspapers since the time, pointing out the front page news and said to me, you guys, Tai Jiman is a scam. Then I started to read the content the more I read, the more scared and frightened I felt. It was not what I know about Tai Chi Men. At the time, at that time, the internet and the communication were not as developed as they are today. So all the information was obtained from newspaper and the TV. The media reported that Tai Chi Men was suspected of fraud, tax evasion, and even raising goblin. This exaggerated plot were all fabricated by prosecutor Ho Kuan Zhe. Also, the law stipulated the prosecutor should not disclose the content of the investigation to the public, not to mention when it has not been verified yet. The media reported day and night, so people thought of us in a very strange way. Every time my classmates talk about this case, no matter how hard I explain, no one Everyone just believed that what the media reported, no one willing to, was willing to listen to what I said and how I felt. So for a while, I closed the door of my heart, isolating myself from all classmates in school. The Taijiman, case, the Taijiman criminal case was finally vindicated 10 years later by Supreme Court, found no guilty and no tax arrears. However, a tax case derived from the illegal action of the National Taxation Bureau marked another new case of human rights persecution. 
In Tai Chi Man case, the prosecutor investigated illegally using false witnesses and evidence to fabricate a false case. Uh, without very, without very verification and administrative enforcement agency illegally and forcibly auction our reserve land from illegal prosecution, forced taxation and illegal enforcement. All of this highlighted many loopholes in country's public power and bureaucratic culture. These are not what should happen in a democratic rule of law country. In the past two, 20 years, my Sifu and Simu continue to lead us in promoting love and peace and culture of conscience all around the world. My Sifu always teaches us to love our country. All of this love and efforts have never been stopped or changed, even in the face of unjust and inequitable treatment by the government. This kind of perseverance and belief has deeply affected my conduct of life. And I've come to understand that every global citizen plays a very important role in the world and should contribute to development and be responsible for the results of the global village. Because of this, I joined the Tax and Legal and Legal Reform League, passing out flyers on the street to raise awareness about tax law. I also participated in law and tax advocacy activities. Just because I was a victim, I felt that I had to stand up for it to prevent more people from being persecuted. We have been fighting against the wrong system of the government that has been in place for many years, just like the story of Davy and the, Davy versus Goliath. My civil teaches us to tell right from wrong and insist on doing the right things. When human rights are, are being persecuted by public power, we must speak out bravely and encourage all people to stand up and support the victim. Only then can the power of justice be demonstrated. There were many cases of human rights violations in Taiwan, such as 228 incidents in the white terror period the Su Jianhe case and the Jiang Guoqing case and the wandering in court for over 30 years case. Some have been vindicated and some are still struggling. When human rights are violated in any form for the individual and their family involved, the sudden changes and the profound impact on their physical and the mental status, status represents an irreparable trauma in their lives. This January, Taiwan completed its quadrennial presidential election. People elected a new president and gave high hopes to the new government. My Shifu mentioned in the declaration for the movement of, a, of an era of conscience initiated in 2014. Conscience leads to good governance. Only conscience-driven policy complemented by conscientious administration can benefit and stabilize the society. Taiwan's transition from authoritarianism to democracy was not easy. However, the government's human rights protection for the people needs to be implemented, and the legal and tax system still needs supervision and reform. We hope that every official can listen to his or her inner conscience and fulfill their duties in serving the people and truly implement transformational justice. I think this is the direction we must work together. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, fake news. Disinformation uh, have now invaded the whole world and it's really a nuisance. But it's not a new phenomenon uh, as a uh, uh, you said, uh, because you were a direct uh, witness uh, of the campaign of lies organized more than 25 years ago uh, against Taiji Men. And you were shocked when uh, uh, a schoolmate showed you the front 
page of uh, the newspaper vilifying uh, Taiji Ben and told you personally, you guys, Taiji Ben, it's a scam. Uh, and then you started to read the content of the article, but uh, uh, the more you read, the more scared, uh, frightened uh, you felt because the newspaper was full of lies. Uh, fake news, yeah, can make a lot of victims and all sorts of, uh, of victims. Uh, this must be fought against, absolutely, but with a constructive and educational uh, mind, as well as with love and peace, as uh, Dr. Hong has always uh, taught uh, is dizzy, and never uh, with feelings of uh, revenge and, and anger. Thank you very much for your personal uh, testimony. Thank you. I, <laughs> thank you. And I will now give the floor to... Mochili, a data analyst. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to share my views on, on human rights on this International Day. Today, we not only commemorate commemorate those who dedicated their lives and even sacrificed themselves for the promotion and the protection of human rights worldwide, but also aim to raise awareness of the importance of human rights. It's more about raising the attention to those victims of human rights violations and even ensuring the justice they deserve. Taiwan being a democratic country, the fundamental principle of human rights as sacred. Therefore, for most people, it's hard to imagine human rights being deprived or violated. Today, I will discuss the Taijiman Human Rights Persecution Case, which has been unreserved for over 27 years from an investment perspective. First, let's talk about Taiwan's efforts and the progress in human rights. In response to global sustainable de development actions and the national net zero emissions goals, Taiwan's Financial Supervisory Commission, FSC, released the pathway to sustainable development for list and OTC companies on March 3, 2022, aiming to foster a sound ecosystem for ESG, which stands for Environment, Social, and Government Practices. Let me briefly explain what ESG represents. E, environment, measures whether a company considers environmental preservation in its development. As social, companies must prioritize social issue, issues such as human rights, community care, and labor welfare during their operations and the development. G, governments used to assess a company's transparency accountability, efficiency, and fairness, addressing, addressing issues like bureaucratic practices and the bonus systems. By combining these three ESG concepts, we can evaluate how a company can contribute to sustainable development while making profits. The promotion of ESG encourages companies to prioritize sustainable development to gain investors' trust, companies must strive to improve ESG-related requirements, be environmentally friendly, value human rights, and eliminate internal bureaucracy and bribery, as these companies understand that in the era of information explosion, any scandal could exalt investors' confidence and severely impact stock prices. As a beneficiary of this system, I'm quite confused by one thing. While the FSC is leading the promotion of ESG, indicating the government's determination to prioritize the environment, human rights, and the combat bureaucratic corruption, why are some government agencies unable to effectively implement ESG and allowing author authoritarian Legacies to continue persecuting the people. Take the Taijiman human rights persecution case as an example. While the FSC is 
advocating for ESG. Another government agency, also under the Ministry of Finance, the National Taxation Bureau, included with administrative enforcement agency and the administrative courts to conceal evidence, resulting in a wrongful judgment of the Taijiman tax case. They illegally auctioned off the sacred land of Taijiman through bureaucrats shared one another, violating the rule of law, disregarding human rights, and even lying through their teeth. Blatantly violated the principles of USG sustainable development principles. ESG principles are not only applicable to companies, but also to nations. If government agencies fail to adhere to ESG principles, even if investors favor a company, considering the country's national risk, the investment value of that company will decline. For example, some non democratic countries may raise concerns due to policy opacity, bureaucratic practices, and the like. Ironically, although Taiwan is a democratic country, the existence of the Taijiman human rights persecution case repeatedly reminds domestic and foreign investors that there are lexes of authoritarian in Taijiman's taxes in Taiwan's tax system, which may pose a high risk to investors, significantly lower their willingness to invest in Taiwan. After all, to make money, Taiwan's National Taxation Bureau is willing to lie through this and uh, forcefully levy taxes just based on their guesses instead of evidences. It will cost you lots of time to find more evidences to prove your innocence. If you do not pay, they will refer the case to an administrative enforcement agency, which can auction off your assets or restrict you on travel abroad. Even if you want to, want to do administrative appeals, you have to pay one third of the tax amount first. Otherwise, it will be enforced for service, freeing your assets, selling them for auction or even taking over them. With the prevailing custom of regarding National Taxation Bureau office, officers as teachers, you only have a 6% chance of winning administrative appeals. But even if you win, the court's decision will be only to return to the case back to National Taxation Bureau for another proper disposal and the illegal tax bill will be never done, tormenting countless taxpayers. Without rectifying this distorted tax system, even if Taiwan's corporate have strong com competitiveness, it may not be able to retain investment funds. And we have seen more and more business and the talents living. Benefit Benefited from the surge of AI and the promotion of ESG, Taiwan's investment value has significantly increased. However, it is a pity that various government agencies still hold on to outdated bureaucratic thinking, only seeing immediate benefits and unwilling to admit past mistakes not only leading to continuous errors and failing to see the long-term benefits of sustainable development, but also causing a serious impact on Taiwan's economic development and its international competitiveness. On the country, on the country, Taijiman ship and did dedicate themselves to promoting love and peace worldwide and supporting the promotion of ESG global sustainable development overseas through actions by their own expense. I believe the resolution of the Taijiman case can represent a significant milestone, standing for government's determination to eliminate the legacies of authoritarianism and implement sustainable development ESG. I hope that this year, the Taijiman case can truly be resolved, allowing Taijiman ship and Digi to fully engage in charitable activities.
activities and bring bright and positive effects to the world. Thank you. And thank you very much, Marshili, for shedding uh, light on the Taijiman case from the perspective of the ESG practices. Okay, ESG, uh, what is it exactly? Just uh, re-explain. So E for environmental, S for uh, social, and uh, G for, for governance. And uh, you said that uh, to gain uh, investors, trust companies uh, uh, must strive to improve ESG. Uh, related uh, requirements, uh, uh, be environmentally uh, friendly, value human rights, and eliminate uh, internal uh, bureaucracy and, uh, uh, and, and bribery. Uh, concerning the fight for the truths about the uh, Tai Chi Ben case, ESG uh, can be uh, translated uh, as uh, follows. E for the environment of uh, the taxation system that must be fair and healthy for society. S for social involvement in the cleaning up of the moral pollution and corruption of the National uh, Taxation Bureau. And G for uh, the governance of the Taxation Bureau to be deeply uh, revised. Thank you again for your specific contribution to this uh, debate. And thank I you. will now give thank you. <laughs> and I will now give the floor to Thomas Yen, structural consultant. Sorry. Should be yours, Thomas. Yen. We so briefly saw you on the screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. <laughs> I'm waiting for the technician to put us back in contact with you. Yes. Okay, here you are. Welcome. Okay. okay, great. Great to be here. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to this forum for speaking out for human rights in Taiwan and around the world. I have been a diesel Tai Chi man for almost 30 years and have been following the teaching of my sifu, Dr. Hong Daozi, after all those years. After experiencing the illegal prosecution of our human rights by the authority in the unjust Tai case, I learned from Dr. Hong the spirit of love and peace and stood out for people's human rights by stop conflict and promote goodness. Over the years, I'm grateful to Sipu Dr. Hong for teaching us the principle of how and what to deal with people and manage matters. Dr. Hong also taught us how to keep out the belief in peace and nonviolence by following the world human rights leaders such as Nelson Mandela of South Africa, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. of United States, and Mahama Gandhi of India. Meanwhile, Massimo also witnessed Dr. Hong and Fo Pao personally applying love and peace and spreading it throughout the world. Therefore, Massimo shared his profound and inspiring wisdom about saving lives in three beautiful chariots. Whenever I face difficulty at work, I can always use wisdom I have learned and turn the crisis into an opportunity. Therefore, in my career, I have served as a business owner of building material, the department director of interior design at a local university in Taiwan, and associate professor at two universities in Fujian, China, and a representative of a 
Taiwanese helmet car factory in Mumbai, India. I have a wonderful life. So I really thank you, my Sifu Dr. Hong, for giving me wisdom and a rich life. On the, uh, on the road to pursuing human rights, fairness, and justice through our own voices, we have raised awareness of human rights in law and taxation in Taiwan and motivate many victims to courageously step up and protect their rights. Over the years, our protests have served as a discouragement to government officers engaging in unlawful activities. History tells us the human rights are often ignored and violated both in Taiwan and around the world. Here, I would like to present two incidents as examples. The first example is a well-known Mr. George Foy from Minnesota, United States, who died in May 25th, year 2020. A police officer pressed his knee against Ms. Foy's neck for only nine minutes because he was suspected of using a counterfeit twenty dollars bill near a grocery store. A person's life, okay, $20 bill and nine minutes was lost as a result of a misuse of public power. This tragic event shows the human rights even in the democratic United States can be violated by government personnel. The second instance happened in the same year in Zhubei City, Taiwan on September 19. Mrs. Huang, a volunteer mother, was uh, abusively uh, detained by the police for over seven hours. She a protest unfair tests by holding up a poster on the side road. The police interrogated an ordinary housewife till after midnight. Her freedom was persecuted. She suffered major psychological harm and even thought her life was in danger. She fainted that night and was rushed to the hospital. The doctor determined that Mrs. Huang suffered acute stress syndrome. Mrs. Huang was declared not guilty in the court a few months later, but it takes time for her to get fully recovered. I personally experienced the December 19, 1996, 1996 prosecutor Ho Quan Ren fabricated a fake case violate the law and misuse the power against Tai Chi Man. Although the Supreme Court judgment on July 19, year 2007, has determined that Tai Chi Man is not guilty and has no tax evasion. By far, the authorities has broke the law and ignored their duties were not punished. The illegal tax bill has not been revoked. We, first of all, on August 21st, year 2020, the Taiwan Tax Bureau and administrative agency once again illegally auctioned Tajiman's reserve lands to take their bounties. Tajiman has not been fully redressed, but for the sake of human rights and people's well-being, Tai Chi Man Dizi, domestic and foreign experts speak out courageously in support of human rights. It is hoped that this forum can awaken the consciousness of Taiwan government officials, stop breaking the law, no more uh, misuse of power, and stop violating human rights. It's an honor for me to, to be with you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Thomas. Uh, 
<laughs> for for more than 25 years now, it's a lot. Huh? <laughs> You've been following the teachings of uh, uh, Dr. Hong, uh, uh, I would say, and, and show, you have shown your solidarity throughout all these years with uh, all the dizzy who have been fighting uh, uh, against the persecution and discrimination of uh, uh, Taiji Men. Uh, based on fake news, as it was said several times uh, today, fabricated uh, information, wrong information, lies, in fact. And siding with the victims is a uh, high mor moral stance. And uh, the, the fight for Taiji Man has been uh, for you a good school and a good training field to now share your long experience uh, uh, with other victims of uh, injustice uh, in Taiwan. And uh, we, we thank you uh, for this. And as you were the last speaker, um, I will now give the floor back to Massimo Intervigne, who will introduce the person who will conclude this uh, webinar. Thank you, Willy, and I will uh, immediately uh, pass the podium to uh, Marco Respinti, an Italian scholar, we should always remember he has had a scholarly career as well, and a journalist who serves as a director in charge of uh, Bitter Winter. Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm not able to join you in person for this important webinar today, but I would like to offer you some reflection as a conclusion of our works. The United Nations draws today international attention on a very peculiar aspect of the violation of human rights. It is the dignity of the victims. People tend to take that for granted and to address it implicitly, but the UN aptly wants to bring that aspect to the forefront and focus on it. Victims of violence and abuses suffer and lose much. Often they even lose their lives. Physical injuries are of course the most visible damages. However, if we concentrate on the gratuitous brutality to which they are exposed, for our empathy with victims make us want to pray, cry, and demand that those harassment and torture immediately end. We read stories or see pictures and videos and we shiver with the victims. We feel like being in their shoes. We almost perceive the th their physical pain in our bodies. And the mechanism of the human psyche is made in such a way that we feel the same way also in front of victims who suffered their fate years, decades, and even centuries ago. Human solidarity springs from this identification with victims, which brings to our sensibility and intellect the most horrendous crime that a human being may suffer, dehumanization. It is horrible even to pronounce this word, made of all that we deprecate. The intention, will, and act of stripping human beings of what makes them what they are, human beings. The horror of dehumanization is the last lie that stands between a victim and a tormentor. On the opposite side lies human dignity. This expression sometimes steers controversy. Everyone thinks, in fact, to be authorized to offer a personal conception, sometimes quite whimsical, of what human dignity is, and confusion arises. Let us then adopt the UN minimalistic and at the same time, grand proposition, human dignity is a person's intangible right to truth. On March the 24th, every year since 2010, 
we are prompted to reflect upon the two levels of this sublime concept. The first is the right to know truth, intended as the right to know how facts really went and are, who was truly the victim, who was truly the oppressor, what intention the perpetrator had for dehumanizing a fellow human being. Today's UN Day of Observance was established to mark every year the anniversary of the killing of Archbishop Oscar Arnulfo Romeo Igaldanes of El Salvador in 1980. In fact, sadly, Monsignor Romero, canonized as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church in 2018, has not only been deprived of the supreme right to life, as if he were not worth of it, but also of the dignity of the truth on what he stood for. Different ideologues made him the champion of their own twisted understanding of things or its adversary, thus condemning, condemning his memory to be lost in a hell of lies. Establishing March the 24th as a day of observance on the right to truth lit a light on Romero, allowing his case to be finally clarified to serve as a standard for other cases. The second level of the right to truth intensive as the right to ultimate truth. March the 24th is a liberating day of observance because it considers crime of the worst in nature that human beings are deprived of their right to believe that truth does or may exist and to live accordingly as individual or as a group within the boundaries of natural law and also of positive law when the latter does not contradict the former. Now, this is the intimate material of religious liberty, as I have been graciously granted the possibility to say a few times. Resisting and fighting the horror of dehumanization based on the right to truth that also the UN brings at the center of its mission means that all human beings must be protected against it, irrespective of what they do or did. It means we do not recognize the right to truth only to people who do good things, people we like and admire and are sympathetic to, our friends or our kin. We recognize it as an intangible right also for people we dislike, we fight, we indict to criminals and trespassers, to people who do us wrong and even to persecutors. We do not do it because we are particularly nice. We do it as we acknowledge that human beings are entitled to the right to, to truth because of their humanity, which predates and surpasses all of our definitions, preferences, and inclinations. It may be difficult, but if we do not do it, we dehumanize ourselves before dehumanizing others. Working in the field of religious liberty, one is frequently asked, are you really defending this person's beliefs or that group doctrines? Sometimes the questions also implies or becomes, are you really defending the weird theology or the strange practices of that person or religious group? The short answer is, no, that is the field of theologians and philosophers, or the police and the public prosecutors, sometimes of confessors. Religious liberty is concerned not with beliefs and doctrines, but with human beings and persons. It comes in before any deed that human beings may do, even in the name of their own right to truth gone astray. A person's fundamental right to the truth of facts and to ultimate truth does not cease to exist because some person misunderstands or misuse it. This is why laws and judicial procedures of society that aim at being civilized struggle to grant fair trials, 
proportionate sentences and humane treatment even to inmates in prison cells and differ from rogue states and regimes. Hajimen Shifu or Prime Master and these your disciples enjoy the right to truth that should be granted to every human being. They are entitled to see that right upheld, defended and promoted. No government and no bureaucrat have the right to curtail the right to, to truth of Tajiman Dizi or of any other citizen based on what they think, suppose or perceive Tajiman Dizi or any other citizen believe or do. No one can discriminate people, be they Tajiman Dizi or any other citizen. People can urbanely discuss with Tajiman about doctrines and ideas but this is a totally different faith. Tajiman Shifu and Dizi may of course be prosecuted by the law in case they commit crimes as any other citizens. In this case, defendants could be prosecuted for their acts, not for their beliefs. Of course, it is not the business of religious liberty to investigate non-religiously motivated crimes. But let us for a moment also consider no religiously motivated crimes. Justice has investigated Taijiman for many years in the Republic of China, Taiwan. Nothing illegal was found. This was established by courts of law, one after the other. All levels of Taiwanese justice repeatedly concluded that no crime or misdemeanor had been committed by Taijiman. The Taijiman was completely innocent. The Taijiman never committed any of the crimes, some even ridiculous, it was accused of. This is a factual truth. One of the aspects of the right to truth that the UN called us to honor on March the 24th. So also this side of the Taijiman case that strictly speaking is not the focus of religious liberty is clarified. But those who worked in the field of religious liberty become immediately interested in these facts when Taiji Man is surreptitiously accused of infringements against the law to mask a blatant case of violation against the right to ultimate truth. So, as Archbishop Romero, Taiji Man deserves the right to factual truth on what really happened in the face of false accusation of wrongdoings, as well as the right to ultimate truth for its members who should be granted their spiritual liberty. Only then we will be, be able to consider the dignity of Pajiman, Shifu and Diz as fully restored. We respect not to what a passerby, a corrupt bureaucrat, or even a Pajiman, Dizi or a worker in the field of religious liberty subjectively regards as dignity, but as the objective entitlement to humanity that preserves Dizi and all human beings from the most awful crime, dehumanization. Thank you, Marco Respinti, for this uh, conclusion. And uh, we have already mentioned it in uh, this webinar, the celebration to honor uh, uh, Shimu, the uh, Madame Yu, the wife of uh, uh, Dr. Hong, which will continue in uh, United States after the celebration in uh, Taiwan. So uh, let's uh, conclude this webinar with a loving thought for uh, Shimu and with a video, which is in fact a trailer for a memorial concert uh, to be held at uh, California State University in LA.
a concert of gratitude and blessings, illuminating the light of peace. April seventh, from three to five thirty p.m. at the Luckman Fine Arts Complex at California State University, Los Angeles. Free admission. Seating is limited. Call six two six three one four three zero nine three. Or scan the QR code to reserve your tickets today. And with this, our webinar concludes. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.